During the filming of the series Life in a Tide Pool, we had the opportunity to visit the Santa Monica Pier Aquarium on three separate occasions. This is video taken from our first visit to the Santa Monica Pier Aquarium. So we're here today at the Santa Monica Pier Aquarium located at the base of the Santa Monica Pier, California. So this is a marvelous, marvelous facility. You can see this wonderful tank behind me. And here today to tell us a little bit more about the research and conservation efforts of the aquarium is the director, Heather Doyle. Heather, can you tell us a little bit more about some of the research and opportunities we have here? Sure. So first of all, welcome to the aquarium. Thank you. Um, Hilda Bay acquired the aquarium about 10 years ago, and we have over 100 different animals at the aquarium. So under over 100 different species right from the Santa Monica Bay. So the animals are all local, and okay. we use these animals to educate the youth, about 15,000 field trips a year, um, about the ocean, the ecosystems, and how they can help conserve the environment. Okay. So how many gallons of water do I have in this facility right now? About 10,000 total. So all of these tanks are linked. It's really okay. fun. So when we start to feed one tank, the other fish in the other tanks, oh, they get fun. really excited. So in a facility like this, I'm pretty sure you have a lot of volunteer help with mm -hmm. a lot of different capacities. So tell me a little bit more about some of the opportunity or opportunities for volunteering here. Sure, so we have two different things, major things that you can do to volunteer at the aquarium. And one is our educational programs. Okay. So I mentioned the field trips that we have. Yes. So we have interns and volunteers that help us teach the kids K through fifth grade mostly. Um, and it's a lot of fun. The kids get really excited. They love the touch tanks here. So you just kind of mm -hmm. shepherd that process along as a volunteer. And the other um, thing that you can do to volunteer at the aquarium is with our docent program. So the other 65,000 people that visit the aquarium come here through our public hours. So that's after the field trip is done, we open up to the public. So our docents stand at each one of the tanks and they learn about the fish so that they okay. can then tell the public all about the environment, the habitat, and the fish that are in the tanks. So you said 65,000 people a year come through this? Yes, wow. annually we have about 65,000. So these are people who are coming to the pier. Sometimes they're people from out of the country, out of the state, or from the region. So you know what I like to do now? We're gonna take a little time and I, could you actually show me around or have maybe one of your staff show me around the aquarium? Sure, would love to. Great. So Heather, this is another wonderful, wonderful exhibit. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? It looks like it's related to the kelp forest. Sure, yes. So all the exhibits that we have at the aquarium showcase habitats. And so all of these animals that you see here in the kelp forest tank are animals that you would find naturally in the kelp forest right. out in the Santa Monica Bay. I'm looking at the water and it's amazingly clear. Isn't seawater kind of murky and algae? We do a great job um, with our water here. So we actually pump 2,000 gallons out from the bay here. Mm -hmm. And we uh, make sure the water chemistry is correct, the pH is correct, okay. um, before we actually add it to our full system of 10,000 gallons. So all of these tanks are, tanks are connected, and it's 10,000 gallons worth of water that our aquarists mm -hmm. do a great job keeping clean and, and safe for the fish and the animals. So I'm noticing the types of animals in this tank, and you have to make sure that you have animals and fish that don't eat each other, right? Right. So what are the types of fish and animals that we have in this tank? So that is what animal husbandry is, right? Making sure okay. that animals um, can relate and get along in a way that's not damaging to mm. each other. Right. So we have a lot of rockfish. Um, we have some um, blacksmith in here. There's a lot of different animals that wouldn't necessarily um, get along, but they are the right size right. that they won't attack each other at this point. So we have to watch and see as they're getting bigger, we move them to another tank. tank right. um, and there's a lot of different relationships and hierarchies that go on in here that you have to keep an eye on. <laughs> right. All of a sudden someone might decide to assert some aggression. So it's really right. fun to see their personalities and, and how they all get along together in their right. mini ecosystem. I have Amanda here who's going to tell us a little bit more about this, uh, what this exhibit is. But first, before you do that, Amanda, Amanda, tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. I am from Pennsylvania, okay. and I moved here about five years ago and started working with the aquarium about three years ago. Tell us a little bit about this tank over here. Sure. This is our Rocky Reef tank, and we have a lot of really cool animals in here. We have three moray, California moray eels. And I've seen what, him. Yes, and um, they're kind of just chilling out right now. But we also have the California lo um, spiny lobster in here, right. as well as, and I don't see it right now, but the Garibaldi, which is our state marine right. fish. Right. 
So how do you feed the animals, especially that more eel over here? <laughs> the more eels, we actually have to use little, um, like little claspers and put it down close to their mouth, right. and that's how they take it from us. Right, I see. Yeah. So who gets to feed that more eel? <laughs> our aquarist staff and our interns. The interns, Yes. Right? Kind of happy. <laughs> yes. This is wonderful. I also see over here a marvelous touch tank. Would you mind showing me a little bit more about the touch tank? Absolutely, let's do it. Come on. I want to actually learn more about some of the mussels in your touch tank that you have here. So I actually want to touch them, and I know I can, but I also know I have to touch them the correct way and have safe etiquette, right? Can you tell us how we can touch the animals here? Absolutely. At the aquarium, we always have the two-touch, two-finger, two-touch rule. So if you just kind of feel the back of your hand, that's a nice pet, that's a nice gentle pet. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that we ask you to do. If you use one finger, that's mostly for poking, but two fingers are nice to, um, to pet with. So I, first thing I notice about the mussels, obviously, is a very hard shell. But tell me about so these little threads that I see in here. What are these yes. little? These little threads are called bissel threads. Okay. And these help the mussel to attach onto the rocks and stay put because they don't have legs. They don't have anything that they can move with. And so mm -hmm. they are a sedentary animal, so they stay put. And those bissel threads are very, very strong. I have to assume that they're going to grow the abyssal threads. They, they, they can make them during their lives, right? They do. So okay. it shoots out like liquid, and then when it hits the water, it starts to harden. Right. And so when it hardens, then it becomes really, really strong, strong as steel. How do mussels feed themselves? Well, they're filter feeders. So they open up okay. their they open up their shells a little bit, and then they, they feed in the animals that you know we feed them here or in the or in real life. So that brings up a great question. How do you feed this mussel in this water here? Yeah, if so we actually take like little turkey basters and we put okay. baby brine shrimp in here and then they open their shells and they feed through that. And I bet you get some interns, right? To feed them? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's yes, our interns yes. again that feed them. I notice a lot of other animals up here. So this, for example, what is this animal right over here? Uh, this animal right here is a sea cucumber. What is a sea cucumber? It looks very warty and kind of funny looking. Sure, this guy is in the same class as sea stars or the sea urchins. They're an echinoderm. Echinoderms, which yeah. usually means hard outer, outer shell, right? So, Something like um, that. it's spiny skin, yeah. Okay. So it looks like they're spiny, but they're very, they're actually kind of squishy. Okay. Yeah. So Amanda, I have some other questions for you about. So these, these mussels down here, I know that they're a very important part of, of the ecology. So who eats, who eats mussels? <laughs> well, we eat mussels. That's but, right, we do. But also, um, we have sea stars that like to eat these. This is one of their favorite foods. So I know when, when I'm out in the tide pools, I see these massive, massive beds of the mussels. And all around the edges, I see the sea stars. Mm -hmm. So the sea stars are feeding on the mussels over there. Guess, Absolutely. Right? It keeps the population in check. Right. So, so if I didn't have any mussels, say humans ate them and stuff like that, there would be no sea stars. It's a possibility. They would find something else to eat. They would eat clams or other things to eat too, but right. um, of course they wouldn't grow as high in population. So this is a pretty important species in the intertidal zone, right? Absolutely. Is, we call them an indicator species, isn't that right, or something that like that? That is absolutely correct. All right. Amanda, thank you so much for showing me around this tide pool. Have a wonderful time. Thank you very much. Thank you.